In this video today, I'm going to talk all about these Lake Malawi African cichlids that I've got in this tank next to me here. This is a six foot water box 7225 aquarium and it's been set up for almost two years. So June 2021 is when I first set this tank up. Pretty much all of these fish are a bit over two years old. So I got them when they were tiny little juveniles and I've grown them out. There are some that are probably closer to just over a year old. I wanted to make this video to talk more specifically about each of the type of cichlid that I've got in here. So I'm going through each of the types of peacocks and haps and embuna and I'm going to pick out some of the ones that are my favourite ones that I've kept as well to give you a little bit of an idea of what these fish are like and what they're like as they grow. I've written down in a Word document that I'm going to post in the bio so that you can see all of the proper names and the species names. I am mindful too that I've got some people that watch my videos that cannot see. And I will try and say the scientific name as best as I can as well as their more common name too and put that in the bio as well. If you're enjoying my content please don't forget to subscribe to the channel. You can hit that little bell notification so you don't miss any of my future uploads as well. Without further ado let's get into the video and check out some of these cichlids. I will just add as well that African cichlids are jumpers. So unless you want to lose some of your African cichlids at some point, it's really important to get lids for your tank as well. So I've just got these netted lids, which don't take away from the nice rimless look of the aquarium because they just sit nice and flush with it. And the ones that I got are from NVS Aquariums here in Australia. They're actually from the Sunshine Coast and they're custom made. So you just send them what the dimensions are that you would like for it and then they make them. And so I think my ones are about $800 Australian for the two of them. And I normally have them on, but just for this video, so you can really see all of the colors and let as much light in, I'm gonna leave them off. Okay, well, let's start with the peacock cichlid. So I'm gonna grab my laptop because I cannot memorize all of the names on here. I have got 10 peacock cichlids. So the difference between the peacocks and the haps and, and buna, I kind of think of it this way. The peacock cichlids are the ones that are all the same. Their body shape looks exactly the same. And they're about moderate, medium sized fish. And the males are generally very, very colorful. Whereas the females can tend to be quite bland. In this tank here, I do color feed my fish. So I feed them an Australian brand called Absolute Color, but there's some other more global brands like White Crane, I think is another one that you can feed fish. And what that does is it makes even the female fish look like males. So they get all very nice and colorful, but it does mean that the fish stop breeding as well with the Absolute Color anyway. And the absolute color one does say that it doesn't use any sex hormones or anything. However, my female fish did used to breed in here and they don't breed anymore. So I think that they must be doing something to their sex characteristics or hormones in some way. So our peacock cichlids are the moderate sized ones. And then we've got haps, which are some of the larger specimens that you'll see in here. So that big yellow one that's up the back, that venestis. And there's also another big one in here, redfin kadengo, just up this end. End. So haps are like peacocks, but their shape can vary quite a bit. So you can get some more predatory ones that have an almost kind of like pointy look to the front of their face. You get some blue dolphins that have like a hump on their face. And they also tend to grow really, really big. And I find that you tend to see more color amongst the females as well as the males, but you do get some female haps that are really silver and bland as well. Lastly, we've got our embuna. Embuna are rock dwelling fish. So they're the ones that tend to like to hide in the Texas holy rock that I've got here and they tend to graze on algae throughout the day. Most embuna do have a really high fiber diet because they are algae eaters with the exception of some like the electric yellow one here which can eat quite a bit of protein too but in general you'll notice that they've got a kind of round shape to their face and their mouth and they tend to stick in the rocks and like to eat all of that algae and everything in there. So that's our kind of three main groups that we're gonna go through, our peacocks, our haps, and then our embuna. All right, so let's start with the peacocks that I've got. In this tank, I have got two OB peacocks, and that stands for a Lunacara orange blotched peacocks. And I've got a little one that I got about a year ago, maybe a bit less than that, and then one that's grown a little bit bigger that seems to be a bit more dominant. I think this brighter one is probably a male, and the smaller one is probably a female. 
One of the things that I really like about the OB peacocks is that even if you do get females and you're not collar feeding, they still have a really pretty pattern to them because they get those nice blotchy bits of black and yellow and orange and stuff on them. And so females might be a little bit more white and a little bit more contrasted with those blotches, whereas the males sometimes you tend to get a lot more vibrant kind of blues and orange hues on them. However, in general, the females will still be quite beautiful too. And then we've got a red Eureka peacock. So this guy here, a Lunocara Jacob Freibergi. And that one is a female, but she's been color fed. So she's showing some really nice reds and blues. And then I've got an albino dragon blood and an OB dragon blood. So they're a Lunocara Bench, I believe it's pronounced. And normally they have the normal black eyes, but my one, this male up the back there, he is an albino version, so he's got that red color to his eyes. And then I've got this albino orange blotched dragon blood hybrid as well in here, which I actually got from a local auction here in Brisbane. And this fish has been a little bit odd. Uh, it's the only one that's not from Mad Aquariums that I introduced into the tank. And it's always been very submissive and it tends to uh, not have good eyesight. So it hangs out near the top of the tank and I just think that based on the movements I've seen it do it's a bit short with sight and I think that that's what I found with the albino types of cichlids in general I would recommend in hindsight probably staying away from albino varieties I've just found them to not be as hardy and they always seem to have some issues with eyesight this male here this orange one just up the back there that one is the father of this orange one here this one is a hybrid between him and my sulfur crested female, which is this lady here who is also on colour food, so got some beautiful colours. And I've got a sunshine peacock, so a Lunocara Stuart Granty Maluri, and that is that beautiful yellow one here with the blue head. I did have two of these guys and they had absolutely no issues. They grew up together, they always got along. However, since moving into this house in October last year, so October October 2022, I had some issues happen where it was the period that I ran out of the colour food. There were some changes in the hierarchy and just with the new move and everything like that, they tried to kind of re-establish dominance. And unfortunately, my sunshine peacock got extremely aggressive and it killed the other sunshine peacock in there. And it also actually killed another beautiful blue peacock cichlid that I had as well, which is really, really sad. So sometimes with these fish, they just turn. Sometimes Sometimes they're peaceful for a really long time and then all of a sudden out of nowhere one thing changes and then it can just set them off and it's called conspecific aggression this thing that happens where if you get ones that look similar to each other it must be a pheromone thing or something they just know that they're competition and they tend to go after the ones that look the same which is why in general you want to just make sure that if you've got a mixed tank that you're just getting one of each type you're not getting a whole combination of like five peacocks that are sunshine peacocks that are all going to be yellow and blue because then you're more likely to get some issues. And then I've mentioned my sulfur, my dragon blood sulfur crested hybrid, which is this little guy here who amazingly, I did nothing to intervene. It's just a survivor from a little tiny fry. It grew up all the way to where it is now in the tank. I've got one here and I'm really not sure of what his proper name is. I just call him my blue peacock cichlid. But if anyone does know the name of this guy, please let me know. So I was just putting this video together the night after after, and I realized that I actually left out two of my cichlids that tend to be the ones that people ask about the most ironically. I did buy them as sulfur crested peacocks but they look a little bit bigger. They've got more of a hap look to them kind of like a Mara Rock cichlid I think they're called. The one that's actually got the most yellow on the head is a female but she's really colorful because of color food and then the other one is a male. He used to look a lot more beautiful but something over time has caused him to have a little bit more watching but they are really gorgeous fish definitely recommend checking them out I got them from mad aquariums and they've always got heaps there and people always ask about them okay uh, let's go haps I've got eight different types of haps in this tank here and they are some of my favorites the giraffe cichlid so you can probably tell why that one gets its name that is this guy who is yellow with the black giraffe looking spots on him there so that is a nimbochromus venestis is the scientific name of that guy 
and I'm not sure if my ones are male or female really but those ones grow really big so this one's just over two years old I do think that he has a little bit more growing left to do I'm just gonna call him a him but I got him when he was really tiny he's super fast growing though and there's some people that keep those guys in colonies they live really well in a little breeding colony and breed well so if you like the look of those guys you can do that and then the one that is the most similar to that giraffe cichlid is my red Kadengo, which is just swimming by him now. So that's a Copa decromus borlei, this one here. And th these ones are beautiful when they get big. So when they're big, they have this nice red body and this blue head and blue fins, even though they're called a red, red fin Kadengo. I don't know how that makes sense. But that one, my Vanestis, so the giraffe cichlid and the red fin Kadengo get along really well. They've always been a similar size to each other. And both of them are the fastest growing fish out of all of them and the biggest in the tank as well. So they grew crazy fast. If you're keeping them, I would recommend having at least a five foot to six foot tank because they do grow so big and so quickly. And then we've got two ones that are called Cyanochromus fryeri. So the two that I've got are different colors though. So I've got one that is an iceberg fryeri. So this one here, this beautiful deep blue one with the white head on top. He is gorgeous. And then I have also got a white knight friary, which is this white one that's more kind of like white, but more like a light kind of blue shine to it. This one here is probably around two years old, whereas the other one's more around one year old. Still really fast growing fish though. And some of my stronger fish as well, I would say. The haps always just tend to grow quickly. They tend to be really hardy, I find, and just get along a little bit better with each other and always just look beautiful. So you can see too that they've got more of kind of like a pointier face compared to some of the peacock cichlids as well. And then I've got a blue dolphin hap in here too. So a Cradocara mori. So this guy here, again, another type of hap that people sometimes keep in a breeding colony where they're all the same. So you can see the difference between the peacocks and the haps. With a lot of the haps, people can keep them in breeding colonies and they do just fine together. You may be able to do that with some of the peacocks as well, but these ones are just some of the common ones that I've seen that in tanks. And so blue dolphin gets its name because it's got that nice little hump and kind of like a little dolphin looking mouth as well on it, but they don't develop that until they get quite a bit older. So again, around two years old, but not until it was around at least a year old did it start to become a deeper blue and develop a little bit more of a hump on it. They are some of the slower growing fish that I've got. A mirable cichlid as well, similar to the blue dolphin, very slow growing. It's one of the smaller cichlids I've got and it's not until they get older that they get the mirror ball pattern on them where it's got the nice bits of white kind of flex on it and they lose some of these stripes that they have when they're juvenile so you can see this one's got some vertical lines going down it still he had a bit of a period where he grew quickly but he's slowed down a lot now again I think he's one of the more submissive fish in the tank and just such a slow grower and then we've got a JLo reef a Placidochromus JLo Reef. This guy just on the end down here who's hiding, so he's blue with a little bit of yellow. Just another nice type of hap. He's a younger one. I've only had him for more around about a year and he's still got plenty of growing to do. Not particularly as fascinating, I don't find, as the other fish because he kind of looks a little bit more like a peacock cichlid, but still beautiful fish. Pretty sure they are quite popular too. Lastly, there is an unknown hap in here. So this silver one down here, I cannot remember buying it. I don't think it was bred in this tank and it's silver, it's always been silver. I'm pretty sure that I bought it knowing it's gonna grow into something with really nice colors. And I think I bought it on its own from Mad Aquariums, maybe not that long ago, maybe like four months ago or so. And if anyone knows what it is, or if you're watching this and you're from Mad Aquariums and you remember me buying it, can you please remind me because I cannot remember. However, when it does grow up and it looks a little bit more beautiful and colorful, I'll let you know because I don't think there's anyone that's particularly going to want that fish. I'll be after it right now anyway with how it looks. So we can give him a little bit of time and see how he goes. Now that's it for the haps. So let's move on to the Ambuna. Ambuna, our rock dwelling fish. I do love haps, but I think that Ambuna are probably my favorite out of all of the Lake Malawi cichlids. I just think that they're adorable. They're always brightly colored. So whether they're male or female, you tend to get a beautiful color no matter what. So let's start with two of my favorite Ambunas that I got. And I got these ones probably also just over a year ago and they have grown so quickly. Our little bossy friend here, Bart, 
part is called a OB marmalade cat as the common name or a Labiotrophius fullerborni. This one is very similar to another Ambuna that I have in here, which is a red one. The other Ambuna that I've got in there that looks similar is called a Chilumba Red or a Trevase Chilumba. I used to think Bart was a Trevase as well, but I believe that he is not. He is the fuller borny one because the Trevase kind of have this more slender, long kind of body, whereas the fuller... Full, full, the Phil Borney ones tend to have this kind of like fatter type of chunkier body. I got them at the same time and they have grown really, really quickly. And they are two of my favorites because they have this unique face to them. I love the little mouth that they've got. I think it's so cute. When I first saw one of these, I just thought I have to have it as an addition to the tank because it's so adorable how they look. It's like a little trunk almost. And so, the reason for having this is because they often graze on algae around where the rivers actually come into the lake and there's really strong fast flowing currents there and so having a mouth like that is helping them to actually grab onto the algae and onto the rock to be able to pull the algae off the rock in the fast flowing current as well so that's a really interesting little fact. I'm just going to tell you my other favourite one as well first. It's a red top hongi, a labidochromis hongi is the proper name and so this one loves to hide in between these rocks on this side here and my logo that my cousin actually made for me thank you so much Kyla is modeled after this one the logo looks a little bit like a mix between a hongi ambuna and a peacock cichlid but the colors on it are modeled off this little guy here and I just love the colors it's my favorite thing about it so he is very, very cute and has never been a problem. Always just had beautiful colors. I love the orange and the kind of lavendery, bluey, purple color that it has on its body and the stripes and everything. And never been an aggressive fish or anything. It just loves to hang out in the rocks to show off its colors and come out every now and then. So out of all of the Ambuna, that is absolutely one of my favorite ones as well. Look, there he is here, he or she. I'm just gonna say he for most of them. Then I do have one more favorite and Boona as well and then I'll just label the rest of them. My last favorite one would be my yellow tail ACI and so that is the biggest and Boona that I have and probably will always be the biggest that I have. They grow quite large and I did have this one actually jump out of the tank once when I left the lids off and luckily I found him though because that would have been such a shame to lose him. I heard him land on the ground and he, I put him back in the water and it was like he was a little bit unconscious for a moment there but then he came good and has been fine since. So a nice bulky tough fish as well and those ones are beautiful whether they're male or female they get this beautiful blue body and yellow fins. That one's grown very quickly and I think it still has a bit of growing to do. They get quite wide wide and quite bulky as well as long too. So another type of Ambuna where if you're going to keep them you probably want to make sure that you've got one of a, a tank on a larger side, more like a five to a six foot tank for those guys. There he is here. So another really beautiful fish and I've never had any aggression issues with him or her either. Always been perfectly fine. I do love the other ones, they're just not my favourites. There's a bit of a pattern here too where the ones are the original ones that I picked out. I tend to be a little bit more fond of them just because I've had them for longer compared to the ones that I got a year after having the tank. But there's some beautiful ones as well that I think you'll really like. Let's start maybe with this guy here since he's out. So this one here is a blue lips cichlid and so the proper name for him is a Pseudotrophius williamsi north and that one is absolutely beautiful. They get these gorgeous blue lips as their name would suggest and this really nice copper kind of orangey browny type of body and it's pretty but it doesn't really do anything to me that stands out in particular. It just looks a bit fat. I find a bit bloated a lot of the time but it's a gorgeous fish and it's grown pretty quickly as well. I got that one when it was quite small too. And then we've also got in here a rusty cichlid or a lavender cichlid is the other name for it. So a Lodotrophius brengare. So he is down this end here. And so I think they're called a rusty cichlid because they get this kind of rust color on their head and on the outsides or the periphery of their body. But then they get this beautiful lavender color kind of along the center of their body more as well. So that's just another type of Ambuna, very similar to the blue lips one I find in just that 
It doesn't really cause any trouble. It looks quite nice. It doesn't have any vibrant colors in particular that I find that tend to really pop in the tank because it's got those more dull kind of hues to it, but still really gorgeous colors. I've got here a blue cobalt zebra. And so that is the smaller and Boone down this end here. And it's kind of like got that whitish kind of blue, similar to the white night hap here. And that one also I only got probably just under a year ago. So one of the newer ones. That one's proper name is uh, Maylandia Calainois. But then I've also got another one that is called a red zebra. And that one is a Maylandia Ethurae. And that one I've had since the beginning. So it's about a couple of years old. And you can see that he's quite a bit bigger. So here's that one just there at the back. So they look exactly the same in terms of their body shape and their face and everything. They're just different colors, but also really nice fish. I haven't had any aggression issues with those guys either. And I thought since I liked my red zebra so much, I would get a cobalt blue one as well, just to go with him. All right, we've got three left. We've got an elongate Ambuna or a Pseudotrophius elongatus. And that one is the smallest one that I have at the moment. So he's just hovering above the rock here. He's this nice blue color with a bit of yellow on his fins also probably around about a year old and is very tiny and was tiny when I got it, but hasn't grown an awful lot. I think they just stay on the smaller side. Again, just a small fish, not a troublemaker, just hangs out in the rocks most of the days, keeps to itself a lot. And that's all it really does. A really common one, which is also really beautiful, the electric yellow Ambuna. So that one's proper name is the Labidochromus Kralos and they look beautiful, whether they're female or male. They're gorgeous yellow colors with these nice black fins as well. And these ones are a little bit unique because most Embruna graze on algae and they need a high fiber diet, whereas the electric yellows can tolerate a lot more protein in their diet because in the lake they will eat things like little bugs and stuff that fall into it, um, or little crustaceans and snails and everything, which kind of makes sense when you look at their face. It's not as round as a lot of the algae eating Embruna it's a little bit more pointy, but they still are classified as rock dwelling cichlids. And another one that's really nice that you can get in a colony as well, that tends to be quite peaceful. It's just well known for being a peaceful Embruna compared to some of the other species. If you do overfeed color food, you'll find that it tends to get some black kind of blotching on its head. But I can, I kind of use him as an indicator to know if I'm overfeeding the color food, because if I start to see that black appear and the color's looking a bit off, then I'll go down a bit. All right, and lucky last, we've got our Lawsy cichlid or a Jeffo Jeffy Rochromus Lawsy. So that one is. I keep thinking that this is going to be when I realize that one of my fish has jumped out or something in the period I've had the lids off. There you are, you're right in front of me. So this one here is our Lawsy cichlid. So that's just another type of Embuna and pretty beautiful. So again, it's got those more kind of dull colors to it. Um, it's got like, you know, the nice yellow and the nice blue, but it's not popping and vibrant like you see with some of our peacocks or our haps or some of our more colorful Embruna. So I find that these ones, the lavender cichlid or rusty cichlid, the lawsy cichlid, and then the blue lips, they don't pop as much and stand out when you look at the tank, just in my opinion, because even though they've got beautiful colors, their colors are a more kind of dull hue. So if you're wanting something that really pops. I think going for ones like the Sunshine Peacock, Electric Yellow, uh, Reds, like the Eureka Red, Dragon Bloods, really you wouldn't think it, but the white kind of white uh, cobalt blue type of colors as well, really beautiful. And the deep like iceberg blues as well, if you're looking for colors. Whereas when you start to go more for these hues that are rusty and lavender colored, then not quite as much do you see of the popping. Kind of like the main fish in this tank. You might have noticed throughout the video too, this OB dragon blood that I think has poor vision. This is how he spends a lot of his time. If you do get subdominant peacocks, they're getting bullied or even if they're just scared kind of fish, then that tends to be what they do. They tend to go and find the filter outlets or the corners of the tank and they just sit there and they hide and they don't like to get in the way of any of the other fish. And 
It's kind of sad to see. I don't like seeing it too much, but it's just what I found. It's something that peacock cichlids do. I don't see the haps or the embuna ever do that. And so if you follow me on Instagram, you probably would have already heard my update. Last night, my camera ran out of storage. Luckily, I pretty much got all of the filming done. All I was gonna say is that if you don't have me on Instagram, which you totally should follow me on if you have Instagram and haven't already, you probably wouldn't know my plans for the rainbow fish tank. So even though I absolutely love it and Jason did such an incredible job with the scape. I have had enough of a break from the African cichlid stuff and I think I'm ready to turn it into a Tanganyikan tank, which I think is gonna look really awesome because it's gonna be nice being able to try another type of African cichlid since African cichlids are what I love so much, hence my name. And so, that's probably going to be something that I'll start to do when I get back from my America trip. So if you don't know as well, I'm heading to America in about three weeks time. So I leave on the 22nd of June, fly into LA, up to Nova Scotia, down to New York, then to Chicago, Ohio, and Florida. I mix that up a little bit, but that's all of the places that I'm going. So I'm very excited to do that. I'll keep you updated with that. And again, if you follow me on other platforms like um, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, I don't post on TikTok that much, but you can make sure that you get all of the updates on everything. But I do try and do it across platforms as much as possible. But I did a little bit of a poll on my Instagram as well, just to see what people would like to see from the trip. And I'm going for about three weeks. So there's gonna be a lot of content that I'm getting because I'm visiting pretty much all aquarium places for my whole trip. That's gonna be the main focus of it. So on the poll, people said that you would really like to see a mix of travel content and of the places that I visit too. So travel and aquarium stuff, kind of like what MD Tanks did recently when he went to Texas, but I'll probably be doing a lot more videos because I'm there for a lot longer as well. And then I'm also going to create some little reels and stuff to put on Instagram, just to show some of the places that I'm going as I travel. And I might put some shorts on YouTube too. I try to post different content on each platform so you're not getting the same thing but then the problem is if you're not on all of the platforms and you miss some of it but anyways but if you weren't on Instagram to answer for that poll let me know in the comments down below too some of the main things that you would like to see from me traveling to the US anything that you're excited to see in any of those places that I'm going as well I hope you enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a like let me know what you think in the comments down below and if you're excited for the Tanganyikan tank and for the America trip and don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell notification too to make sure that you don't miss any of my uploads in the future and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.